Registered Phenomena Code 127 Object Class Beta Purple Hazard Types Sapient Hazard Transmutation Hazard Aquatic Hazard Emotional Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-127 is to be contained within a pressurized modified 90-meter airplane hangar on the outskirts of Site-002. Alterations to the hangar include a 60-meter by 35-meter one-way opaque side on the exterior window within the southern facing wall, 15 industrial humidifiers spaced evenly across the ceiling, a pressure-controlled observation deck, four water drains whose runoff is piped to an external retention pond, two 50-meter by 25-meter swimming pools installed into the floor of the hangar. These pools are to be filled with locally sourced rainwater on a bi-weekly basis. In RPC-127's years of containment, it has never expressed hostility toward any Authority personnel. As such, any personnel with Level 3 security clearance or higher may request access to RPC-127's hangar for research or stress relief purposes. See Document 127-P3 for extra information regarding RPC-127's containment protocols. Description. RPC-127 appears to be a sapient iridescent cloud. Although RPC-127 is able to change its shape and has appeared as all forms of cloud coverage, it most commonly appears as a stratus or stratocumulus cloud. RPC-127 is also capable of manipulating itself into more complex forms not found in the natural clouds, such as tendrils, geometric shapes, and numbers and letters. Regardless of its form, it possesses a distinct pastel rainbow color which shimmers and moves in the light. This coloration does not obey the laws of light refraction typically observed by mundane rainbows and iridescent clouds. Instead, it appears under any light level, even at night or in poorly lit environments. Although its mass and density appear identical to regular clouds, RPC-127 appears to be heavier than standard water vapor clouds. Subjects touched by RPC-127 report that it feels like being wrapped in damp fabric rather than fog. RPC-127 sustains its form with moisture gained from the environment, as regular clouds do. When out of containment and low in water, RPC-127 will move to humid environments to absorb more water vapor. RPC-127 will periodically rain, reducing similarly to non-anomalous clouds. RPC-127 rains approximately every 14 days, requiring more local water to keep a consistent shape. The rain from RPC-127 possessed no anomalous qualities. Despite the anomalous characteristics present within RPC-127 physiology, it still appears to be made entirely of non-anomalous water vapor. Water molecules lose all anomalous properties upon being separated from RPC-127 and appear no different than non-anomalous water when inspected under a microscope. RPC-127 has displayed signs of intelligence. The object's intelligence depends on a variety of factors, such as the amount of water it currently possesses within itself, the form of cloud it takes, and the local temperature. At its most reduced form, RPC-127 behaves like a non-anomalous cloud, showing no signs of intelligence. With the amount of water provided as specified within its containment protocol, its intelligence is comparable to a ten-year-old child. Research suggests that if provided enough water and placed in the right environmental conditions, RPC-127 could reach intelligence levels rivaling college-level adult humans. The object is capable of communicating with Authority personnel and has expressed goodwill towards the Authority. When a living creature comes into contact with RPC-127, the subject will undergo several biochemical changes within their body. This includes increased production of dopamine, serotonin, as well as the inhibition of glutamates. This results in subjects becoming content, unstressed, suggestible, and passive. These feelings become more pronounced the healthier RPC-127 is. These effects will slowly wear off once RPC-127 is no longer in contact with the creature, usually taking one to eight hours to fully reverse. RPC-127 seems to willingly control the mis- RPC-127 seems to willingly control this mechanism and can touch a person or animal without them undergoing the effects. However, 
It appears to prefer the user's ability and will always attempt to use it on nearby living creatures unless specifically instructed not to. Addendum 127-1 On August 3, 2000, faulty wiring caused an electrical fire to occur within the observation deck of RPC-127's containment hangar, blocking off escape routes for research personnel and trapping them in an enclosed space with the fire. Upon noticing this, RPC-127 compressed its form enough to slip through a crack in the observation room glass created by the researchers. RPC-127 proceeded to use its anomalous abilities on the researchers, preventing them from panicking. Then began raining, nine days earlier than expected on the fire, extinguishing it completely. This level of problem-solving and altruistic behavior are atypical in sentient animate object anomalies. On August 6, 2000, parapsychology expert Dr. Green arrived at Site-002 to attempt to communicate with RPC-127. Using a series of ideograms, nonverbal gestures, and abstract symbols, Dr. Green was able to establish a form of communication with RPC-127, as well as determine the object's sapient nature. After months of frequent conversation, RPC-127 gained a rudimentary understanding of the English language. Efforts to teach RPC-127 to follow other orders and complete tasks such as moving objects, forming specific shapes, and selectively using its pacifying ability are ongoing. Note from Dr. Green following Interview 127-016 Communication efforts are progressing nicely. It seems to be able to recognize me by name now. Unsure if that's simply from the sound or because of the name itself. Either way, progress. Also, I believe it would prefer a window in its containment unit. Likes to watch clouds. I think that could be arranged. I'd also like to recommend increasing its water intake by 50%. Expanding its mental capacity could help us gain a better understanding of its function. Addendum 127-2 On June 15, 2000, Dr. Green and a security detail enter RPC-127's containment unit for a routine interview session. As Agent entered the hangar, RPC-127 immediately drifted over to him, extending downwards and enveloping him in fog, triggering its pacifying effect on the agent. This was considered unusual behavior because as of RPC-127 and Dr. Green's 7th interview session, it was believed that RPC-127 had been trained to no longer use anomalous abilities in human beings unless specifically instructed to. Dr. Green opted to continue the interview despite this behavior, a log of which is provided below. Interviewer Dr. Green Interviewee RPC-127 Forward At this point in RPC-127's containment, the object had developed a strong enough understanding of the English language that the use of ideograms was generally unnecessary. Begin log. Would you like to tell me what you were doing? We've been over this. You can't just handle people like that anymore. RPC-127 begins raining a small amount, an act believed to be a sign of sadness. Why, Agent? You haven't done that in months. Why now? RPC-127 reshapes its form to a representation of a human, then the same image, missing its head. It then changes into a rain or teardrop shape, raining mildly. Hmm. Will this be a problem again? I may have to cancel some of our interviews if so. RPC-127 quickly changes its form into an X shape. Very well. I'll be back next week. End log. Following this interview, post-incident screening of Agent revealed that 14 days prior, the containment breach of RPC resulted in the death of the entirety of his security unit via decapitation. Agent reported anxiety, depression, and other symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder prior to being affected by RPC-127. Afterward, he described his negative feelings as washing away in a second, a feeling which has persisted even after being removed from contact with RPC-127. The use of RPC-127 as a stress relief utility for Authority personnel is pending. Approved. Subsequent interview logs redacted by order of the Chief of Protection. Contact Archival Director for permission to access additional logs. Notice, accessing this document without permission by the Directorate of Protection is forbidden. 
Unauthorized access is ground for administrative disciplinary action. You have been warned. Upon analysis of RPC-127's anomalous properties, it was determined that the object could be employed by the Department of Protection for the purpose of expanding the Authority's access in the regions that have previously prevented Authority operations via political or military intervention. This endeavor, designated Operation Cloud Coverage, was confidentially discussed with lead researchers on RPC-127. Forward. Below is a recorded conversation between the Secretary of Protection, Valerie Stanson, and Dr. Green, head researcher on RPC-127, concerning the initialization of Operation Cloud Coverage. This discussion was held within the Secretary's office at site. Dr. Green enters the office and sits down. Welcome. Sorry for the delay. I hopped in my car as soon as I read your email. What's so important that I had to see you in person? Information security is of utmost importance, which is why I assume I can trust that nothing we discuss this evening will leave this room. Of course. Very well. Is it true you've been working with RPC-127 lately to determine the extent of its intelligence? Yes. We've made progress by upping its water allowance and keeping the containment unit at 18 Celsius. The object is able to complete some minute tasks, pushing a ball down a defined path, making specific sim- I've read your research notes, thank you. Do you believe RPC-127 would remain under control if removed from its cell? Dr. Green pauses. I suppose. And do you believe RPC-127 can follow a series of instructions on its own if requested? If its water levels were right, most likely it depends on… You do understand how important global security is to the Authority, right? Dr. Green remains silent for a few seconds. There are many organizations, governments, special interest groups who all prevent global security. I'm sure you're rid of them. Has especially been a thorn in our side since the Cold War. I don't see how RPC-127 is relevant to any of this. That object can change things for us. Can change people for us. People who have hindered Authority efforts for decades can be made more… amendable with RPC-127. The phenomena behind an object isn't fully understood. We can't accurately predict what it would do under specific circum… Hasn't your research shown that the object obeys orders and is loyal to the Authority? Yes, at the water level we keep it, but it's basically a child mentally. We have no idea how it functions with a higher water content. What if it gets out over the ocean and… thank you. This conversation has been very productive. End log. As of March 11, 2000, Operation Cloud Coverage is active. Classified. Directorate of Protection Document. Access without proper clearance may result in amnestization or other administrative disciplinary actions. Operation Cloud Coverage Standard Mission Procedure RPC-127 is to be deployed against persons or groups of individuals who have expressed aggression or harmful intent towards the Authority, prevented the Authority from protecting the general populace against anomalies, refused Authority intervention within specific areas, otherwise hindered the Authority's ability to research, contain, or protect against anomalies. Upon identifying an individual or individuals who meet one or more of these criteria, RPC-127 will be deployed to their location. To prevent civilian or hostile groups noticing the object, it will travel above or through the cloud layer to hide its conspicuous form. The object will remain as close to the location of the hostile entity as cloud patterns allow. Once RPC-127 can find a location within 10 km from the target's location, and can still cover its form, it will separate a smaller, less noticeable portion of itself in an attempt to make physical contact with the target. After contact is confirmed, RPC-127 will modify its form to a layer of fog nearly imperceptible to the naked eye, and will remain in physical contact with the target as long as possible. By being in prolonged contact with RPC-127, the hostile entities will become less physically, ideologically aggressive towards the Authority, more open to Authority's suggestions or recommendations, more likely to support the Authority in their goals of research, protection, and containment of anomalies. As of March 12, 2000, Operation Cloud Coverage has had successful missions. 
Experiments increasing the amount of water provided to RPC-127 is pending regional director approval. Approved.